For rocking, start off with your hands under your shoulder and your knees under your hips. To move yourself forward and backward, push down into the ground firmly and pull your shoulder blades down. Make sure that when you're rocking, both arms are completely locked out. When you bend the arms, the movement moves into your chest and isn't really a back-focused exercise. Once you get comfortable with your rocking, you can take the knees off the ground for a more advanced version. Nothing changes about the movement except that your knees are slightly off the ground. During this baby crawl, we're going to be using the same shoulder blade action for the rocking. So pull the shoulder blades down and into your back pocket as you crawl forward and push through the arms as you go in reverse. For this next progression, you can keep your knees off the ground. Nothing changes. You should move with control the entire time. Make sure you're pushing away from the ground as much as possible. As you get more comfortable with crawling, you can work on harder variations, such as the hollow crawl. Make sure you're pushing through the ground as much as you can and pulling the shoulder blades apart. As you step forward, actively pull your shoulder blade down to move you forward. For an extra challenge, see how long you can balance with one arm and one leg off the ground. Again, control the movement and make the movement small in the beginning. Keep pushing through the ground the entire time and make sure that you're not relaxing through the shoulder blades. The forearm plank is a fantastic exercise for the lats and the abdominals and basically your entire body. But in this variation, you want to make sure that you're pushing away from the ground as much as you can, pulling those shoulder blades down and back as you slide into the starting position. For this next variation of the forearm plank, the seesaw, you can use a towel or a pair of socks. I'm using a dish towel in this case. You'll set it for your plank the exact same way and to move yourself forward and backward you're going to pull the shoulder blades down and push the shoulder blades up. The entire time you're focusing on pushing away from the ground, staying hollow. For the windshield wiper, you want to start with both arms flat on the ground and make sure that your legs are squeezed together the entire time. Notice that whichever side I'm rotating towards, the palm is facing the ground and the opposite palm faces up. Make sure that as you roll, you're trying to glue that shoulder to the ground and that you aren't cheating through a range of motion. Also, as you rotate, make sure that those knees stay in contact the entire time. If the knees are coming apart, it means you're moving a little too far into a range of motion you don't have control of yet. The more comfortable you are with the movement, you can work on extending the legs for an extra long lever. This makes it much harder to keep those shoulders in contact with the ground. You can also think of corkscrewing the shoulder blades into the ground as you move from position to position. You'll feel a pull through the lats and that's how you know you're moving in the right direction. For the tabletop rock, send your hips up nice and tall in the air. As you rock forward, allow the shoulder blades to travel up and to return to your starting position, push harder into the ground and pull the shoulder blades back into your back pockets. For the three-point bridge, focus on keeping a stable arm for support and shifting your weight back so the shoulder is stacked directly over the wrist. Keep the hips up nice and level and again push away from the ground as much as you can. As you grow comfortable and feel that you're strong enough to support yourself, you can take that arm back and reach back, creating a nice long line and a nice tall spine the entire time. It helps to follow the arm that you're extending over your head as you attempt to keep the shoulder stacked directly over the wrist. The bridge push-up is perhaps my favorite alternative pulling exercise. Now I understand you're not really performing a pull, you're performing a press, but you are strengthening your entire posterior chain and it's a nice way to stretch out your lats after performing some of the other variations that were in this video. Again, take your time with this and it 
is okay if you don't have the range of motion that I'm demonstrating in this video. It took me quite a bit of time, but by working on partial reps or working with your feet elevated, you will certainly build up your range of motion over time and with practice. Now, I hope these variations were helpful for you. And if you like them, go ahead and post them on social media. Tag me at Motion McMahon and let's see what you can do with your pulls.